Alexis Bloomer is a journalist out of Texas who recently came to fame. Uh, she put a video on Facebook in which she pretty much condemned her whole generation, millennials, for being worthless. Uh, now, the video has received over 40 million views so far. So, what inspired this whole rant that she went on, Mike? Well, uh, she went to the post office and she noticed a group of young men rush past an old man who was limping to get into the post office and they didn't hold the door for this old man. So, mm -hmm. that triggered her in some way. I took it upon myself to try to evaluate what's so wrong with our generation and why they're so mad at us. And then I pretty much realized that we're just existing. We're not really contributing anything to society. Our generation doesn't have the basic manners that include no ma'am and yes ma'am. Whether people say yes ma'am or no ma'am is not a litmus test to determine where our society is. No. Like people were saying yes ma'am and no ma'am during the lynching period. That's true. People were saying yes ma'am and no ma'am during Jim Crow. Yeah. During, I don't know, the mm -hmm. contentious debate about the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. Or anything like I, I just it's just not a good argument to start out with we listen to really obscene music that degrades women and pretty much glorifies drugs and crime all right so she's already losing me this early on okay yeah. all right now if you look at when millennials were i guess in their development stage as teenagers mm. or when they were young right um were they in control of the music industry no not at all so they didn't make the music, right? No. So it was another generation? It was another generation. So Maybe it was the generation him. that she's trying to appeal to in the video. Exactly. And another thing, when did that saying sex, drugs, and rock and roll come oh about? Oh boy, that was decades ago. That was decades ago. Was that before millennials? I think it was before ah, millennials, right? Okay, okay. Yeah. What, about, what, what, what about Woodstock? Oh boy. What about Woodstock? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was that glorification of drugs in any way? Just a little bit. We use words like bay to describe someone we love. If you're going to be all twisted and knots about the use of the word bay, which mm -hmm. is just short for babe, mm -hmm. which people use a lot like, hey, babe, what's yeah. going on, babe, yeah. which is short for baby. baby. Yeah, so exactly. if you have a problem with bay, you need to have a problem with babe, too. And secondly, it's just some sort of colloquialism. It's just an it's endearing just a, term for their woman or their man. I, I could say, hey, um, hey, curtain. Hey, muffin. Hey, pumpkin pie. Yeah, sugar. Hey, light bulb. Sugar plop. I, I mean, it could, be any, it, it could be anything. It could be anything. Dog, if you call Teresa light bulb. <laughs> hey, uh, scruffly top. <laughs> I mean, it could be absolutely anything. And we idolize people like Kim Kardashian, and then we shame people like Tim Tebow. If Tim Tebow was criticized, it was solely for his lack of talent throwing the football. All right, that that's why he was criticized. But but again, but as it relates to millennials, yeah, or were exactly. The were the millennials the ones that were doing most of the criticizing and shaming? Yeah, them? exactly. That's the question. How does this relate to millennials specifically? I saw a lot of people on ESPN talking about how Tim Tebow was not good, but nobody <laughs> was talking about how bad of a person he no, was. It was all about nobody his ever talent. talked. To, actually. Mm -hmm. They went on ad nauseum about how good of a person he was. That's right. Our idea of standing up for something we believe in means going on Facebook and posting a status with your opinion. That's what she's doing. <laughs> That's exactly what she's doing. She put this on Facebook. She put it on Facebook. And we believe the number of followers we have reflects who we are as a person. No, that's what you believe. <laughs> that's what you believe. Stop projecting that onto your entire generation. We're more divided as a country than ever before. And I think our generation actually has a lot to do with that. We're, we're more divided as a nation than ever before? What? Now see, that is such a, a narrow view of history, isn't it? I think Donald Trump has oh, said I was about to say, thing, that right? sounds like a stump speech. Let's go back in recent history, like, Iraq, yep. the Iraq war, the contentious yeah. debate right. about the Iraq war. We were very divided about very that. Divided. What did millennials have to do with that? Nothing. Well, let's look at the, the current situation in Congress. See, Congress has like one of the lowest approval ratings in history. Yes. The, the most, least effective the probably least effective? ever. Yeah. And you talked about recent That's history recent. Too. That's recent history. Look, civil rights movement. Jim Crow. Jim Crow. You know what I'm saying? Slavery. Slavery. The lynching period. Yeah. So we're more divided now than then. Wow. And, yeah. and 
It's millennials' fault. <laughs> yes, yeah, specifically millennials. Everything that used to be frowned upon is now celebrated. Mike, what was frowned upon that is now celebrated? Look, man, uh, I don't have much. I don't, I don't, I'm, look, the only thing that she could be talking about, the only thing that I could think of is people being gay. Because, you know, decades ago, it was very frowned upon now, right? But now we have it where it's more accepted. But maybe and, she's, and, yeah. she's just kind of talking about all the other stuff she's mentioning, like, you know, cursing and uh, was that frowned degrading upon? women. Was that, was that frowned upon? Exactly. That's what and I'm saying. I don't know. it now? Answer the question. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, because she didn't say. She didn't say. She's not saying anything. We have more opportunities to succeed than any of those before us, yet we don't appreciate the opportunities we have now. Now, but is that true? I mean, I, maybe someone could make the case, but mm -hmm. she surely didn't because nope. she didn't provide nope. any analysis, nothing, right? Nothing, nothing. But I could, I could be on the other end of that argument because, let's see, uh, we still need jobs in this country, right? We still uh, need a lot more jobs in this country. Outsourcing since the 70s has yes. been crazy. Yes, very harmful to American jobs, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and American workers, of course. Mm -hmm. People are being paid lower wages because of that outsourcing. What about the increased cost of going to school? Yes. That has outpaced yes. people's wages. So, that that to me, that adds up to... Um, I guess circumstances that don't lead to more opportunity. That that is, and again, those are things that more than millennials have been talking about. Yes. Mm -hmm. And 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 mm, these things that we were just talking about does that impact just millennials? No, it doesn't. No, it does not. No, it no. surely doesn't. No. So at the beginning of her whole rant, she said that she. Based on her evaluation, evaluation, she she, she 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 decided to take the time to evaluate the circumstances of millennials and what they're acting like, what they're doing, what who they are, right? But I didn't see any diagnostic results. No, I did. I I don't. I didn't see anything other than nope. a bunch mm -hmm. of vagueness. Nope. All this all this added up to was speculation, not evaluation. She did no evaluation whatsoever because I'm still left like this. I'm like, because I don't even know what she's talking about. Everything that she said is like, all it is was like a feel good speech. All it is, is like we, we just referenced Donald Trump just a few minutes ago. He says a whole lot of stuff that everybody's like, yeah, yeah, make America great again. I don't know what the hell that means, but okay. The reason why it probably got people riled up and got the amount of views is because what people do is they take her vagueness and then they fill in the blanks. Right. Because they fill many in the blanks of whatever prejudices that they already have, mm -hmm. whatever problems that they feel the world has and that, you know, they have a disposition to. Mm -hmm. Whatever their dis disagreements are, they fill in the blanks themselves and then they then filter that that anger or that dissatisfaction through a group. This group is millennials. Because she was so vague and not specific, like not even an ounce, she could have said this about any other group. She could have said this about black people. She could have said this about Hispanic people. She could have said this about gay people. Teletubbies. <laughs> she could have said this about anybody and it would still leave you with, uh, okay. Could you provide me any statistical analysis to support this conclusion that you've drawn? No? Oh, you're full of shit, huh? <laughs> <laughs>